so many different ways to go about like being more sustainable and being able to make sure that you know things work in a constant flow. What I learned here I can take back to the community because in our in our community we do not have that sense of environmental um, sustainability. It, their simple practices and their simple choices made in lifestyle that when applied at home it's just as important and it's just as effective. Collaboration means that we're all working together, you know, it's a more holistic way of seeing things and therefore solutions present themselves quicker. My name is Claire Morris. I am an environmental educator and I work amongst people in the sustainability sector. Um, my name is Luzu Komelapi. I'm staying um, around Kaelicha in an area called Ilita Park. I'm Justine McCarthy and I'm 24. I'm doing this WESA course as well as studying at UCT. I'm doing my honours in environmental management. My name is Sonika Kirsten. I've been a, a massage therapist for 10 years. About Four years ago I started working with solar cookers. Now I'm spreading into that place where I actually want to influence other people, maybe by example, but also maybe by providing opportunities. This program has been a year. It was quite a bigger group when we first started and it's kind of gotten down to some committed leaders that have seen it through. At first I thought it was a course. It is in fact a program. So we come together by our own free will, we're not forced into it by contract or by payment. And we decide what happens and how it goes. So as participants, we were asked to take the reins and the facilitators functioned as solely facilitators, facilitating that process and encouraging us to come back. Basically, it has been about developing leadership skills. And we meet up three times a month, give or take, and we have had site visits and we go and see various places where we can learn about renewable energy or waste management. Um, we've learned things on site here at WESA. Um, Patrick, for example, has taught us how to make worm farms, so like how to reuse our kitchen waste. It's also about introducing new technologies to people and uh, learning personal skills. When I came here, I didn't want to listen to other people's views. One of our facilitators, which is Stephen, he taught us how to be a listener, not only wanting your voice to be heard. Just like practical on the ground skills that we can use in our own homes and then spread from there. So we chose what we wanted to learn, where we wanted to go, who we wanted to meet, how we wanted to do it, which was very challenging at times because we were all very used to, okay, hi everyone, here's the itinerary, this is what we're going to do today, this is what you're going to learn. We came here and there were expectations of us. So we kind of had to, you know, step up and, you know, the course is stepping up to environmental leadership. So we had to, what are, what are environmental leaders? We had to ask ourselves a lot of questions. There was many inspiring things uh, that people are doing. Bus Cliff for me was very inspiring to see the work that they have done there. And what inspired me is when we went to Soul for Life here in Constantia, which is a big garden one guy called Pat took us around the tour there in which I was quite amazed what you can do organically without using chemicals, without using um, material things, just using recycled goods. So for me, I took that, I took that with, with me to say that what can I do to, to, to help with my community because we do not quite have a lot of gardens there. The other eye-opening experience that I had was going to a landfill for the first time and actually seeing where all of our waste goes and it was unbelievable. Like I think everyone should go and see where, you know, it's normally out of sight, out of mind, in the bin, no one knows. But to actually see a landfill and the size of it and just, it, it's overwhelming.
organic gardening and permaculture gardening. We wanted diverse groups. Yeah, we said that it's the wildlife um, and environment society of South Africa. Julian, perhaps from your point of view, um, what are the what are some of the things that really stood out for you in this specific course? Throughout the program, we, we got to visit various NGOs and um, fantastic projects throughout Cape Town, and to see, you know, some of the the on the ground um, answers to these questions that we have, and to see people, you know, moving forward and, and making positive changes. Uh, sometimes in a very small way, but, but significant nonetheless, because it's those small actions which, which add up and, and add to the change. We had a, a weekend away where we did a, a, a hike from McGregor to Grayton, which was really cool. It was a 14 kilometer hike, and it was the first time that we actually had prolonged time, like actually just being in nature and just you know having quiet time and just walking through the mountains. It was great. I really enjoyed that. I really also enjoyed the, the weekend away, the McGregor hike. I enjoyed the interactions. On the Saturday we did some um, transactional analysis stuff which was really lovely and just yeah seeing all the personalities and um, and everything interplay. We also went to one of the, the fields in Filippi which they are doing compost and they are actually doing compost out of out of dirt that they are getting all around and all the leaves that are picking up. I really like the zero waste in Philippi, just seeing the practical power <laughs> of compost. I had to do a community project as part of the program and I chose to work in the spheres of food security and biodiversity, basically selling organic and heirloom seeds to the public. Uh, my project is definitely on, on, on gardening. The most thing you need is there is the people's buy-in to actually do it so that you know that it will be sustainable. It's not something that will just be there and then when you're not there, then it's gone. It was something that will stay in people's hearts, that people will be able to feed and what you have done for them. The nice things about this project is, is that I get to support a, a grower of foods, a farmer, um, and then that I get to provide seeds to people who want to start new gardens um, with, yeah, like pure seeds, as it were. My project's called Forgotten Cotton. The main aim is just to change perceptions about waste and to ensure that fabric doesn't end up in landfills. It's unnecessary and um, there are a lot of people that can use it. A lot of underprivileged people and a lot of people that just don't know that it exists and that are just rather buying new fabric when they could in fact be reusing fabric that would otherwise have been thrown away. My project is an event which I intend to happen once a month where people can come together and collaborate in sharing skills and sharing knowledge and sharing resources this event we're going to do workshop on food security at home. So it will be on vermiculture, container gardens, composting, and participants can go home with a gift bag so that what is learned in the workshop can be practiced at home. I used to work in for a big retailer. I was a garment fit model and while working there I saw a lot of the fabric waste in the testing site that they had and I saw a lot of the things that were being thrown away. And obviously the public wouldn't really see that, but I did and um, I just kind of realized, well, if this is just one place and one testing site, then there must be so much more that's going on that you know, your everyday person wouldn't really see. And people are realizing that it works in their benefit to be able to say that instead of paying someone to fetch your waste to go to a landfill, to say that you know, you're rather giving it over for a better cause. What is your project uh, about then? What I've arranged is at my um, sort of block of apartments is to begin recycling there. And I stay in an area with a very intensified housing and the, you know, there's big blocks of flats all around us. So the idea is to eventually get a network going between all of them and for, for those houses to start recycling more of, of their waste and to see the value that there is in, the, in that uh, material and that it can be kept away from the landfill mm -hmm. and in the end someone can actually make money off it, off, off our waste essentially. It's been very fulfilling. One part of it uh, was that I went to the Monsanto um, march that happened. I felt like I was part of the solution. 
you know, where everybody was going, no GMO. I was going, well, here's some heirloom seeds for you right here. And it was really like, it, it felt really good because it, it wasn't being anti something, it was being for something. And I feel like that's always a more positive statement. Some of the learning that I've gotten here in how to make the compost. So that is the other ways of sustainable that I'm going to be trying to use, like the household green stuff that you're getting from the kitchen. That is some of it that I'm planning to be using in the garden. We can't always prevent waste and we can't stop the fashion industry, for example, but we can make sure that the end result isn't so bad. And, you know, we're only we individuals and we need to take small steps and it starts like that. We just have to be more aware and more conscious and share that with people. I'd like us to step it up and keep it going and keep sharing these things that we're doing and keep being innovative. If we are going to be the leaders of tomorrow, we need to be able to step up and say, right, what do we need to do? How do we do it, you know, realistically, on the ground, practically? You know, let's, let's get on with it. And we did.